Hello Psychonauts! So today I'm going to talk about DMT hyperspace. In this video I really want to explore and try to answer the question, what is hyperspace? So I'm sure as most of you are familiar with, hyperspace is taken to be the place that you go to when you break through on DMT. It is often defined by its insane geometry. There is a lot of hyperbolic geometry, a lot of transforming geometry. There is sort of an impossible nature to the space itself. It may operate in a non-Euclidean way. Um, you can also run into paradoxical objects, objects that are impossible in our typical three dimensions. Um, this is also, you know, the space where people have encounters with entities. This space often feels hyper real in the sense that it's more real than real. It feels more real than waking reality. There's also sometimes a familiarity to the space. So I'm going to get into a bunch of different ideas here. Some of it is more going into detail and going into a more mathematical perspective. Some of it's a more general perspective on the DMT realm, but either way, it's all going to come together to explore and answer the question, what is DMT hyperspace? So one point that I really want to discuss is the non-Euclidean nature of hyperspace. So hyperspace is often described and experienced as a non-Euclidean space and what that means is the fundamental or foundational axioms or rules on which the geometry is based differ from Euclidean geometry which is basically your common sense perception of geometry. This sort of geometry transcends common sense. So for example um, three 90 degree left turns may not necessarily be equal to one right turn uh, directionally. There's other ideas. Um, Non-Euclidean geometry and hyperbolic geometry are often talked about in the same sense. I do see a lot of hyperbolic shapes whenever I have entered the DMT realm. So just basically the rules are different in this geometry than our common waking perception. And it's not just the hyperbolic geometry itself, but it almost seems like space has been transformed. Um, almost like space is bending back on itself, like the fabric of space is being affected. So another point I want to get into is mental dimensions. So actually the common definition of hyperspace, if you just look up hyperspace without any reference to DMT, a definition that you'll be given is a space with dimensions beyond three. So a space with more than three dimensions. Um, I do think DMT hyperspace is an example of this. Now I need to clarify what I mean by dimensions. So I do think there exists higher dimensional space that transcends physical space. And I'm going to continually define this idea more and more. So to just get a general idea of my conception of this, imagine there's this higher dimensional space. I mean, we can even say it's an infinite dimensional space and, you know, contained within that infinite dimensional space is this 3D physical space. You know, I subscribe to idealism over materialism, so I think reality itself has a mental foundation and not a physical foundation. I don't think material or physical objects are the base of reality. I think that there's this underlying mental layer and physical reality is just this sort of special case of this larger mental reality. Another idea that I need to lay out is the idea of the mind as a filtering valve and the idea of mind at large. This idea was presented by Aldous Huxley in The Doors of Perception and it's a concept about, you know, our mind uh, filters out most of reality and, you know, what we see in our waking consciousness is just a small slither of what there actually is to perceive. And I do think that there is substance to this idea. The dimensions beyond those which we typically experience in normal, sober, waking consciousness exist in the mind. And not just my mind or your mind, but 
the mind or the universal mind, the one mind or mind at large to use Aldous Huxley's terminology. And physical reality is a part of this. Getting into that, what happens when you smoke DMT? So when you smoke DMT, and more generally this can be applied to when you take any other psychedelic, when you take a psychedelic, it disrupts this filtering mechanism and now you see more of reality. And I know that's a bit of a controversial idea because uh, the common view of things is psychedelics make you see reality incorrectly. But I, I don't completely agree with that. Back to, let's go back to the question, what is hyperspace? So it is a higher dimensional space. It is a mental space, but I'm not saying that it doesn't have an existence. Physical reality is contained within this larger mental higher dimensional existence. So these spaces do exist even though they don't exist in a physical sense. So what differentiates these higher dimensional spaces from normal physical reality? Physical reality is defined by its concrete structure. We can define it and it's tangible. I think physical reality is a lower energy reality and these higher dimensional realities are higher energy and what that necessarily means is that things can transform more quickly so um, in physical reality it takes a lot of effort or work to uh, for energy to trans to transform to go between forms um, but in this higher mental reality there is no there's less boundaries, there's less constraints, and so energy can move more freely. Um, that's why I think that there's there's this transforming nature to DMT hyperspace where everything is just constantly transforming on itself, which is gonna bring me to the idea of impossible and paradoxical objects. I think this reminds me a little bit of what Terrence McKenna has said sometimes, like entities may show you objects and there are these impossible, beautiful, uh, paradoxical objects that you can't even conceive of and you know I think that these objects exist in this space you know I've been sort of hinting at that I think hyperspace has its existence I think paradoxical objects have their existence um, they just can't be defined so they cannot exist in physical space but uh, it kind of makes me want to draw a parallel to something like imaginary numbers um, they exist just as much as so-called real numbers. Uh, it's actually unfortunate, the naming of these things, but they, they just have different parameters. They, you know, by necessity can only exist in these higher mental dimensions. And back to the idea as mind of a filtering valve, we can only access, you know, these dimensions and we can only perceive this extra reality under certain circumstances. The idea is that, you know, our mind filters out most of reality because that's what's good for survival. Um, I think this is a really good idea and a really good theory, especially when it comes to DMT, and it would explain why DMT sort of like, it happens so quickly compared to other psychedelics. It disrupts that filtering valve that much more suddenly. So you get this like, this big glimpse of ultimate reality. Um, before your mind can even comprehend and you know get back down to baseline. Okay, so here's a general overview of this idea. The whole thing of a, is a mind, you know, the whole reality, the whole universe, or you know, language is very inadequate. Um, our language is based in this physical consensus reality and we don't have a sort of higher dimensional syntax in which to actually describe these spaces and honestly I feel like I'm really straining my mind trying to discuss it like the more I try to think of it and understand it and analyze it like it just feels like my mind is like this rubber band I'm trying to understand it but then it just snaps back and you know I'm back in common sense perception and I can't remember it again so the idea is that the whole thing is a mind you know the whole of reality operates as a mind and what can minds do minds can create models of reality um, what we call reality is a model of reality it's a three-dimensional model of reality 
um, but there's a larger model, you know, this model fits inside a much larger model. So minds create models. The reality that we typically perceive is just that it's a three dimensional model. And what psychedelics do and specifically DMT is they disrupt this model and we get a glimpse of the infinitely complex higher dimensional reality. Uh, but our brain tries to shut that shit down pretty quick and we're back into normal sober perception because that's what we need to survive. That's how our brains evolved. We're not going to get around it. Okay, so I really want to keep going back to the question. Um, I'm sort of like obsessing about it. Like what is hyperspace? Like my mind is really trying to understand it. So basically, I mean, in common terms, hyperspace is just a collection of characteristics and ideas to define a certain subjective experience that people have. Um, there's a lot of shared characteristics and shared qualities of these experiences and so we can kind of get together a definition of what this place is. Um, and that's, you know, a definition of hyperspace as it stands, you know, but I really want to answer that question in a more meaningful way than, you know, it's just this collection of characteristics based on subjective experiences. I have the tendency to look at things from a very analytical perspective and the DMT experience can't be easily analyzed. In fact, any psychedelic experiences can't be easily analyzed. Um, I just, I have a quest for understanding. My, my mind just wants to understand things. Um, but you know, I do want to say one last thing and any understanding that can be gained by doing this process, by analyzing it and, you know, studying all the little details, studying hyperbolic geometries, studying, you know, non-Euclidean spaces, studying higher dimensional spaces and higher dimensional models, none of this, it all pales in comparison to the direct experience. And I think that that's the only way to truly understand. And, you know, a lot of times there is this sense that you do understand, like, when you're in it. When you're in it, it all makes sense. And, you know, like I said, it's this higher dimensional space and this 3D model is confined within it. So when you're in this higher perspective, of course, it seems more real because it contains more of reality. Um, you know, it contains your model of physical reality, but then it also you know, opens up your perspective to this larger reality. Um, and it can really truly only be understood through the direct experience. But I still think it's fun to talk about. I still think it's fun to try to understand what hyperspace is from a sober perspective. You know, I think the combination of, you know, having the direct experiences and then coming back and trying to you know, model these spaces is, you know, I find it very interesting. I think it helps my understanding, especially, you know, doing them back and forth, you know, you try to create this model in your mind and then uh, you have the experience and that model is completely shattered. And then you go back to the drawing board and you're like, okay, well, how about this model? And then, you know, that's, sh it, it's always shattered whenever you do the experience. So, I'm coming to the conclusion of everything I wanted to talk about. Um, to sum things up, I do think hyperspace has an existence of its own. I really would just say hyperspace is a higher dimensional space that can be accessed through DMT and potentially other psychedelics, but just really not in the same sense. I do think it's a part of reality. I don't think it's purely a product of our brain. Um, you know, I'm always open to changing my mind on things and playing around with different ideas, but as things stand now, this is how I see things. Saying that DMT hyperspace is just a product of our mind still doesn't help us understand what, what, what hyperspace is. I mean, people are having this experience, it exists, you know, it's real. I think the fact that people often dismiss these experiences as, you know, your brain going haywire. I think that that's kind of missing the point and I hope more people want to get on board with understanding 
uh, the psychedelic experience and psychedelic realms. Um, there's definitely more to psychedelics than this sort of systematic perspective that I'm presenting at the moment. There's definitely a more intuitive and spiritual side to psychedelics that I definitely love exploring too. I'm interested in anybody else's thoughts on hyperspace and you know how would you answer the question what is hyperspace? Um, yeah, there's definitely still so much to explore and look into and, you know, my understanding is, you know, basically trivial. It, it's nothing. So keep that in mind. That is all for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye!